welcome to our Palm Sunday service. We are pre-recording this and we're hoping that you'll be able to join us when some of us do meet. Sadly, we can't be outside. But this is just a little memory of how we did used to stand outside and wave our palm branches just like they did when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. So let's just pause before this time together and I'll lead us in a prayer. Humble Lord, while people clamoured for a warrior king, the cult revealed your servanthood. As you face the way of tears, the tearing of the temple veil, take us from the baying mob to our faith in you. Jesus Christ, our victim and our Saviour. Amen. A reading from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. I will remove the battle chariots from Israel and the war horses from Jerusalem. I will destroy all the weapons used in battle and your king will bring peace to the nations. 
His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Because of the covenant, covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who still have hope. I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 19. After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, Why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, The Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees amongst the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he, <clears throat> as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late, and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls, and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder how many of you have had to cancel holidays in the past year. I've had to can cancel three, and one of those was cancelled twice. We all love the excitement of escaping somewhere different, somewhere beautiful. Personally, I also want somewhere warm. On Tuesday, we marked the anniversary of the first lockdown a whole year ago. And during that time, we've been waiting. We've been waiting for the end of this pandemic. We've been held captive by this coronavirus, and we've been waiting for freedom. In C.S. Lewis's book, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the land of Narnia has been held captive by the White Witch. She has kept Narnia in winter, spring, hasn't come for generations. Aslan is the true king of Narnia, and he's all that's good and just and perfect and righteous. But Aslan hasn't been seen in Narnia for generations, although there are prophecies that he will return and bring them freedom. Mr. Beaver sings a song to the four children. It's a prophecy. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bares his teeth, 
Winter meets its death, and when he shakes his mane, we will have spring again. The people of Narnia were looking for a king to set them free, and that was the same for the people of Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. Jerusalem is crowded, full of people who've come to celebrate the festival, the greatest festival of all, the festival of Passover, when they celebrate their escape from Egypt. And yet they are captive again now, this time to the Romans. So they're waiting for another Moses, a Messiah to rescue them. And Jesus shows up on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy that we heard in our reading from Zechariah. The crowd go wild. This is the guy who's been doing all these miracles. Turns out he's going to rescue us from Rome. Remember that prophecy from Zechariah? The victorious leader's coming. It's happening today. The celebration quickly spreads throughout the whole city. And the, sh and the crowds shout out, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna. It means save us now. The people want freedom and they want it now. They want Jesus to solve the Roman problem now. They get some palm branches off the trees and throw them in front of him. The palm carpet is rolled out for Jesus. But what is Jesus' reaction to his new celebrity status? He cries. Jesus' heart is broken. He knows that the crowds are only making him king for a day. They want a king that will lead them out of political slavery. They want Jesus to destroy Rome, not to destroy their sins. They're looking for short-term solutions. But Jesus wants to offer them eternity. Jesus cries because the people don't realise that they're going to face even worse oppression than they do right now. And he also cries because, as he says, you did not recognise it when God visited you. In The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Aslan is known for always doing the unexpected. When everyone expects him to be the great military leader, instead, he allows himself to be sacrificed. The four children who are visiting Narnia each have a different response to Aslan. At the name of Aslan, each one of the children felt something jump in his inside. Edmund felt a sensation of mysterious horror. Peter felt suddenly brave and adventurous. Susan felt as if some delicious smell or some delightful strain of music had just floated by. And Lucy, Lucy got the feeling you have when you wake up in the morning and realise it's the beginning of the holidays. Jesus offers us, offers each of us, the invitation to join him in his story. A story of death and a story of resurrection. A story that offers real freedom and everlasting holiday joy. So as I end this talk, let's take a moment of quiet. In contrast to the crowds and the shouts of Palm Sunday, let's just take a moment. And I invite you to ask yourself the question, where have I recognised God during this time of waiting? And what is my response to him today?
One of the joys of Palm Sunday is reading The Donkey by G.K. Chesterton. When fishes flew and forests walked and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening cry and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody of all four-footed things. The tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will. Starve, scourge, deride me, I am dumb, I keep my secret still. Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my ears, and palms before my feet. In the words of Zechariah, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. Again I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we pray you will bless all the royal family, and particularly at this time, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, now back from hospital and at Windsor Castle. We pray he will make a, good, a full recovery from his recent illness and will continue as always through his long life, to be an example of loyalty to Her Majesty the Queen and to the whole nation. Lord, in thy mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Best trust the happy moments. What they gave makes man less fearful of the certain grave and gives his work compassion and new eyes. The days that make us happy make us wise. Lord Jesus Christ, you healed many who were blind and lame and people suffering many kinds of illness. We believe your healing power is as great as ever. We bring to you all those suffering from COVID-19, 
especially those continuing to live with long COVID. We thank you for the outstanding work of doctors, nurses and all hospital staff. We thank you that the work of scientists was rewarded with several safe and effective vaccines with which to fight the disease. And we pray that people the world over will submit to vaccination so that COVID-19 will eventually be brought under control. Lord, in thy mercy, hear, hear our prayer. This is a poem in memory of Jackie George, who lived in Laverton. If you stand very still by Patience Strong. If you stand very still in the heart of a wood, you will hear many wonderful things. The snap of a twig, the wind in the trees, and the whir of invisible wings. If you stand very still in the turmoil of life and wait for the voice from within, you'll be led down the quiet ways of wisdom and peace in a mad world of chaos and din. If you stand very still and you hold to your faith, you will get all the help that you ask. You will draw from the silence the things you need, hope and courage and strength for your task. And so to conclude, the Suffolk Prayer. We remember before God all those who make our journey here happy and fulfilled, our families and our friends. We name in our hearts those who live a long way from us and we don't often see. We remember before God all those who are sick in body or in mind, people in hospital, people undergoing difficult treatments. And we remember before God all those who, for a while, have lost those they love and are sad. We thank God for all his mercies to us in this beautiful place, for giving us good food, good homes and good friends. We thank him for the countryside and for our gardens and fields. We thank him for the gifts of the spirit, books and music. We thank him for our animals, which give us such happiness. Most of all, we thank him for our Sunday service each week and for the leadership of the Reverends Caroline Walker, Joe Robinson, Alex Holmes and for all who contribute to and record the services. Lord, in, in thy mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. prayer.
Sunday service and during the whole of Holy Week there's lots of different things happening so I suggest the best thing to do is check out the website for pre-recordings of Compline. Come and join us for the Zoom Passover meal. There's an hour at the cross reflection on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday if you haven't got a place in one of our churches then there's also going to be a pre-recording of the Easter Sunday service. It's a different time but a special time and I pray that wherever you are, whatever you do in this coming week, as we walk with Jesus through these final moments, you may encounter him again in a special way in your lives. And so let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the way through this whole year you've drawn us together and Lord, we pray that as we walk once again towards the cross with you, we may remember that you are our King, for whom we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs>